Hi, everyone. I hope you are doing well. On behalf of the Glaze, we'd like to extend a cheerful welcome to you all. Thanks for joining us today. In each episode of Sharing Global Views, we meet, learn, and share our thoughts and creative ideas with experts and leaders on different global matters. So far, we've covered many fascinating topics such as heeding the climate change warnings, renewable energy, green development, and innovations, business innovations, and so forth. The show is part of Sharing Economy Initiative, which aims to make the world more sustainable step by step. If you want to know more about Glaze and Sharing Global Views, welcome follow us via our social media platform. So Tia, how are you and what's our topic today? Very, very good, Helena. Thank you so much. And welcome everyone. Now as again, welcome to all the Americans who are having their early breakfast tea and someone from Europe will probably enjoy your lunch and lunch tea. And from Asia, you probably just finish your dinner and have your dinner tea. Our program is supposed to be quite uh, casual and more tea talk like. And actually today we actually had someone actually very in that direction with good entertainment background and a lot of things that I can explain to young talents, which is kind of a succession of what we had previously with Colin on uh, talents across borders. Now, please, again, allow me to introduce the main host of the day, who is um, former president of Costa Rica and also the standing chairman of GLACE, uh, Jose Maria Figueres. Welcome, President. Thank you, Lena, and thank you, T. Good morning, good midday, and good evening in Beijing and Asia. Welcome to another edition of Sharing Global Views, which is brought to you by Glaze, a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization promoting the ethos, the views, and the concepts of a sharing economy a sharing economy towards which we can move coming out of this global crisis, which on the one hand would better fulfill the aspirations of millions of peoples around the world in terms of improving their living conditions. And on the other hand, would be respectful of the use of the limited natural resources on this planet, our home. Today we have with us a fantastic speaker who I am privileged to introduce, Scott Douglas Williams, who will be sharing his views and his perspectives on a topic which we often talk about and all wish we had, which is six degrees of separation. It would be wonderful if we had six degrees of separation to be able to talk and contact everyone that we wanted to do so with in the world. Scott is a senior director with uh, Tojoy Capital Holdings based in uh, Shanghai. And prior to that, he held several executive positions with pop icon Stan Lee's POW Entertainment Company, as you recall, the creator of Marvel and a vast array of superhero ca characters like Iron Man, Spider-Man, the Hulk, the Avengers. I guess with Scott, we can all get six degrees of separation to all of these, uh, <laughs> <laughs> to, to all of these superhero characters. Uh, during the late Stan Lee's transitional period back in 2019, Scott oversaw the elevation and the acceleration of the remaining Stan Lee Powell, Powell intellectual property archives and presided over the very, very successful uh, January 2019 Hollywood Memorial Tribute at the TCL Chinese Theater where 500 selected fanatic fans from across the United States and other countries and 400 Hollywood and business VIPs came together to honor the life and time of one of the world's greatest pop cultural icons. Scott has lived in uh, many geographies and so is uh, well versed on cross-border, cross-cultural issues. Uh, he founded the Chinese USA Investment Council Committee as a separate nonprofit while he served as vice president of the American 
Chamber of Commerce in Shanghai. He has served in several corporate executive positions in the past with FedEx Express and DHL uh, and has a master's degree in international management from the American Graduate School of International Management, Thunderbird, now a part of Arizona State University Knowledge Center and an undergraduate degree from the University of Oregon. So Scott, thank you so much for joining us from uh, Shanghai to share with us everything we need to know about six degrees of separation and how it can promote a sharing economy. Welcome, Scott. Great, thank you, uh, President Figueres and the Glaze team. It's a great honor to be invited to this show. And you know, while we often say that we live in a small world that through technology and social media networks, vast supply chains, we actually live in a global world. And while that's true, it can be emphasized that uh, if we're really paying attention, uh, even with all this technology around us today, we might even meet a person sitting across the table uh, at a restaurant, at a networking meeting, or or through just a chance encounter that that may lead to a broad realm of new opportunity. So today I'll talk about six degrees, and uh, if we can share the next slide, then I'll talk about the content uh, that we'll show. I believe the screen screen is being shared. Is that right? Um. It's beginning to be shared right here, now. Yes, here it yes. Comes. Here we are. Okay, great, great. All right, thank you very much. Let's go to the, the second slide and we'll get started. Okay, so here's the content. Thanks everybody for joining in and watching this show. And again, thanks to Glaze. The content uh, that I wanna talk about is, is represented here. Uh, six degrees of separation is, is not a new uh, concept but it certainly is valid even today, with all, even with all the technology and platforms and things around us. Um, and as I go through this content, uh, I want to end by reminding and talking about opportunity and chance. In today's world, I think for a small individual, small business, uh, growing business, there's more opportunity today than ever before. Uh, next slide, please. Great. Well, I want to, you know, depict a little bit about the sharing economy uh, and if those that may have access to movie archives, uh, for example, even before talking about this first movie, uh, six degrees of separation was something that was even talked in academic circles uh, and in the media back in the 1920s. Uh, the concept of any person in the world through diff about five different intermediaries or people can meet someone else, anyone else in the world. And that was the concept. Um, this became even more evident, actually, the, the naming of Six Degrees of Separation uh, through a movie uh, that was in 1993. It was actually a very unique story at the time. It was actually the current superstar today, Will Smith. It was his first movie. Uh, it wasn't huge at the box office, but it had some very interesting elements within the story that through altered ways of meeting different people, uh, Will Smith, the actor, uh, had a great uh, influence on different encounters and, and meeting different people. Um, and this movie, in many ways, some believe the story actually impacted or spawned the ideas of many adaptations in the movie industry in Hollywood, including some believe the story of Back to the Future was inspired by the importance of chance encounters and the impacts that they can make. Now, today we have Facebook, WeChat rooms, internet, TikTok, everything else. But there's some things that, that are age old theories that never fade away. And that one encounter with one individual can lead potentially to great opportunities. Let's go to the next slide. Another uh, movie that depicts uh, in, a, in a very, very clear way. If you have a chance, if you haven't seen this movie, Babel, uh, I, I recommend it. It's a very interesting movie. Uh, it, starts, it starts with a married couple on vacation in the Moroccan desert. And all these different stories of three different families, different cultures on three different continents are all interconnected. Now, by the end of the movie, it, it explains why all these different cultures and individuals 
uh, are interconnected and why they're connected. And it becomes sort of a surprise ending. So I really recommend you take a look. It's a really good revelation of six degrees and what it can mean in today's modern world. Next slide, please. Now, six degrees, uh, how do we empower, you know, really six degrees is sort of an age old uh, theory, age old concept. But today, it's more valid than ever before. We're going to talk about ways of empowering six degrees in today's market. So if we look at frequency and intensity um, and passion and things that we, we use through technology and meeting individuals or looking at different opportunities, uh, those platforms are, are making these type of chance opportunities available more than ever before. On the lower left, however, it talks about the strong ties in, in colloquial relationships, hom homogeneous uh, societies and localities where ties are very strong. Uh, people dress alike, think alike, um, and tend to uh, sometimes be less creative. Uh, whereas, what do we mean by weak ties in, in advanced modern societies like a different modern, you know, developed countries around the world? You see a lot of distant ties. But with technology, with platforms, uh, and ways of meeting people, either through chance opportunity or through these different social circles, social media, it's actually weak ties that allows for a tremendous amount of creativity and opportunity and connections that that have never uh, been been seen before. In fact, there's sort of a mathematical formula around this uh, that talks about frequency of contact, emotional intensity, which is important too. I'm going to come back to that later. Intimacy and then reciprocity. So age-old theories, but today they can be done uh, through platforms and different technologies. So six degrees, age-old concepts. And today, uh, these can be enhanced and accelerated even more for opportunities. Next slide, please. I want to explain a personal story. Um, and thank you, for President Figueres, for mentioning Stan Lee. Uh, I'll talk about a little bit about myself first. You know, uh, and, and my profile was mentioned. I won't go back into that. But, you know, in November, November 1st of 2018, I'm sitting in Shanghai, I'm 8,000 miles away from Los Angeles, a Shanghai resident. I had rarely been to Beverly Hills. I, I, I you know, I looked at comic books as a kid. Uh, I never really read a comic book from cover to cover. I had no deep Hollywood experience, and I was basically an investment or nonprofit professional. And my son used to tell me about Stanley on the way to the movie theater, and I still probably wasn't even listening. So you take Stan Lee on the right, uh, legendary, as President Figueres mentioned earlier, legendary icon. We don't need to explain Stan Lee too much, but he really was the creator of superheroes and, and really one of the greatest icons of the last century. Some compare him to uh, Mark Twain, and some have even compared him from you know several centuries ago to even William Shakespeare. So how in the heck does a guy like Scott Williams end up having the opportunity to sit at the very desk of Stanley and be in charge of his company, Stanley Pow Entertainment. So that's what I want to talk about next and how that happened. And this is an example of six degrees of separation. If we go to the next slide, the, the power of meeting someone today or even of, of yesterday is ever powerful. You know, for young people, for small business, for entrepreneurs, for businesses that are starting to bud and grow, never give up the opportunity of thinking you can achieve your dream, you can reach multiple markets around the world, and you can even be sitting at a desk somewhere in the world you never dreamed of. Um, you know, I met one individual um, going from left to right, a Professor Young at a local art school, a uh, member of AmChim Shanghai, we were looking at working on this radio program to promote the chamber. That led, it didn't materialize, but it led to someone connected to entertainment. Uh, I'll call her Helen. Uh, the next individual, I, I, I have an avatar here. Uh, her name is Rachel. I, I think of her as a real superhero. 
but she ended up being connected to Stanley's company indirectly and became their CFO in Los Angeles. Uh, Echo, who was working at a company down in Guangzhou, uh, indirectly related to the company in LA. The person on the far right is Gil Champion, a 25-year friend of Stanley, one of his closest friends, and then meeting Stanley. So at the time, they were quietly looking for a CEO, and uh, I was in the process of talking to them. And then, as mentioned earlier, the late Stanley, Stanley died. I was talking to them on a Thursday. I had actually called the company, was talking to a few people. I'd overheard Stan's voice, was hearing about him. I was joking uh, that my, my nickname in the Chamber of Commerce was Iron Man. And uh, I really didn't see this as something that's coming to fruition. But Stan died on Thursday. And so it became not a, a must. It became not a thinking of having an interim new CEO. It became a must have. And so on a Thursday, hearing about this opportunity, suddenly on a Monday, I was flying to Los Angeles. And that very next morning on, upon arrival was restructuring the company and actually sitting in Stanley's desk. He was eventually awarded the keys to the city of Los Angeles by Mayor Garcetti. And only the third person in 100 years to have that prestigious award. So the message here is six degrees of separation uh, can happen. And in today's world, they can happen even faster than this kind of story. Now, I believe in many people's lives, there's a story like this. You know, we meet a certain amount, number of people in our lives that had such an impact. If I hadn't met that person, if I hadn't gone to that meeting, if I hadn't posted something on that platform, I wouldn't be where I am today. Now, we can look forward and do that more and more in the future. But I, I'm just a big believer in six degrees of separation, and even more so today as we move forward into all these new technologies. Let's move on to the next slide. Okay, let's look at uh, some new things that have happened in the last 18 months. Now, prior to the pandemic, uh, you know, archived podcasting, Zoom was popular. TikTok was becoming popular around the world. And what happened during the pandemic is Zoom use suddenly skyrocketed. And we were hearing lots of news about Zoom. But what also happened, and more and more people are recognizing this, is that a new app uh, using your iPhone uh, arose out of Silicon Valley called Clubhouse. And what that is is live podcasting. Basically, it's almost like live radio. You're driving your car, you're listening to a live radio show. The difference is drop-in audio is live audio while you're, you're cooking, you're washing the dishes, you're walking the dog, you're golfing, you're driving. You can hear live podcast anywhere around the world. Famous people, celebrities, investors, influencers, marketeers, professionals, all sharing personal insight that anyone in the world up to, I think up to 10,000 people at one time can listen to these podcasts. And based on your contributions and questions and elements, how much time you spend on the app, you can actually be upgraded to a speaker, a moderator, to the live stage to ask questions. Any question you want, there are no dumb questions. Um, so Clubhouse arose during the pandemic. Now, uh, programs like Twitter, Facebook, and others uh, are looking at ways of doing the exact same thing because they're seeing real value in live podcasting. So what does this all mean about six degrees of separation? It means those six degrees are even less today. And that represents even more opportunity today. I believe there have been hundreds of opportunities forthcoming from um, shared service platforms, from live podcasting, Zoom, and all these different things. So these age-old theories are now becoming even more evident with new technologies. And there's, as I mentioned from the start, more opportunity today than ever before to present your idea and to meet people and find investors. It's a really exciting time. Let's go to the next slide. Yeah, so today we're, we're really surrounding ourselves by great analytical tools and one of the questions that came out of this theme today was, 
how do we go from six degrees of separation, those age-old theories of that first encounter and meeting by chance the right person that led to the next right person, is the use of tools and technology and smart matching, but also getting involved in shared services, platforms. Uh, you know, there's a company in Shanghai that uh, that is a very interesting company. By subscription, you don't need to own uh, that that uh, that bike, for example. You know, by subscription, you've got access to any bike you want, new bike. You can trade it back and forth. Uh, maintenance it can be covered very quickly. You're covered through insurance. Uh, after 30 days, you can leave the bike somewhere, and by, by by GPS, they come find the bike and pick it up. You know, these all these kinds of different types of uh, opportunities are keep arising in this theory, uh, in this modern era of shared services and subscription services versus own ownership. And uh, these opportunities will continue to rise uh, as we uh, move forward. Uh, next slide, please. The most important thing when we talk about six, six degrees of separation or three or four degrees of separation or even less today is that these opportunities are in front of us to access, to reach, to influence, and, and really, as President Figuera said, to have a positive impact on, on lives and people. And while we're doing this, we need to keep attentive uh, we need to keep our intentions known. Uh, we need to make our interests clear because one day uh, somebody, someone or many uh, out there through these different platforms and abilities to reach people just might be listening. Um, and I'll conclude by saying one of the things that Stan Lee always said is that the most common thing about a superhero is an individual who simply does the right thing for people and has the opportunity to do that right thing. And as you have more superhero traits along with your own human frailties, then you have more responsibility. And that was what he meant by a superhero. So thank you very much. And uh, I, I look forward to any questions that you may have today. Thank you. Scott, thank you very much for uh, sharing this wonderful story. Uh, not only your personal experience in terms of uh, six degrees of separation, but also your thoughts on how in the world of today, uh, there is even a greater opportunity uh, to go after our dreams and be able to, well, fulfill them. Uh, T, let me turn it over to you, please, because I know there are some questions that have come in from the audience and perhaps you would like to uh, feel them. Yeah, thank you so much, Mr. President. Um, hey, Scott, thank you so much for sharing. We actually have a few, he's actually some from, um, I think, asking questions about young talent. You know, you mentioned the young talent a few times, you know, through new technology, we can really help them to reduce the separation. So what would you advise the young talent do to help them reduce degree of separation from, you know, to better use of, utilize of their talent? You know, apart from you mentioned technologies, anything else you would advise them? Yeah, T, that's a great question. And, and uh, you know, years ago, uh, you had to find the right person. Uh, th th let's say a small business is trying to raise capital, for example. Um, first of all, you had to have the credentials. Uh, then you had to reach the right person. And then you had to involve a lot of people around you as sort of backing you up and and, and sharing your story in the, in the right way and so on. Um, today, through the technology and platforms that are available to young entrepreneurs, uh, you can share your idea in person uh, through different you know, opportunities, through events and so on. But it, 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 there's so many great platforms out there um, uh, through shared services where uh, you can share a really good business idea and um, I've been talking to uh, an ex-UBS uh, executive uh, based here in Shanghai that runs sort of a boutique investment services company. And what we're reading in the news and what he's also confirmed is, you know, there's a lot of money flowing in the economy. Um, there's uh, 
a lot of upside on, on a lot of different areas right now. But the, the market is flush with cash and the cash is now looking for opportunities. And those can be angel investments where people are taking a little bit more risk but are believing in something really exciting or secondary type investments as, as, the, as the investment moves to the next range of opportunity. So now is a better time than ever of getting your idea out there because cash and, and uh, a capital uh, is looking for opportunities. And so it's, it's important to share those opportunities uh, through these different platforms. Uh, they're available and uh, these things are, are, are ever more uh, enlightening. I mentioned some of these in the presentation. Thank you very much, Scott. Thank you for that uh, nice advice from you. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking there must be a lot of uh, young talent who have lots of undergrads and postgrads. They'd be very interested to hear that. Um, Helena, do you have anything else from the audience? Yeah, there's one question is, how would you apply this theory to the sharing economy? Yeah, I think, you know, the, thank you, Helena. The, the, uh, you know, earlier we had we had mentioned that uh, in the days of old, where you know six degrees of separation, instead of it just being by chance, uh, which is still important, you know that chance encounter of meeting somebody sitting across the table, um, that chance encounter now can be accelerated so much today uh, with uh, ways of pitching ideas and and reaching different platforms uh, and sharing your ideas. So. Uh, in today's sharing economy, there are a lot of business uh, forms where, you know, young people, millennials, uh, Generation Z, they, may, they maybe they want to own a house, maybe they want to own a car, but generally they want freedom to travel. Uh, they want freedom to, to spend their time, their valuable time in, in the way that they see the best fit. And they're looking more at lifestyle and uh, so those types of individuals are looking for not necessarily spending money on, on things that are going to have depreciating value, but, but sharing business ideas where it answers to that younger generation. And so I would encourage those that have those ideas where in the sharing economy, you're not necessarily having to own everything but the idea of subscription and spending money for certain fees or usage in the market uh, will only continue, will not slow down. So please share those ideas and get them out there to different platforms that are available to you. Uh, if I may come in for a minute, Scott, um, I, I, was, I, I was taken by your, when you commented on the, on the strong links and the weak links. Uh, I mean, you know, you would think that six degrees or less of separation would be tremendously enhanced by strong links. And yet you were making the argument that it is usually the weak links that allow for a lot more outreach, uh, contacts and creativity. Would you would you care to expand on that a bit for us, please? Yeah, it's, it's sort of a it's sort of a, a traditional theory that um, in a homogenous culture or a like 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 minded culture that uh, that you have access to the world and, and that your world is limited, so to speak, to that homogenous culture. Uh, but in economies where there are actually distant links, uh, there are weak ties, that today's technology allows the opportunity to create relationships almost uh, instantly. Um, as an example would be shared platforms or sharing ideas, but as I mentioned as well, um, you know, the, the notion of live podcasting uh, where Twitter is going to follow what Clubhouse is doing and others. Um, an individual anywhere in the world can be listening in, getting advice, or actually getting investment by simply pitching verbally a concept or an idea. So 
uh, so someone in one, one continent of the world uh, listening to a, a speaker in another continent on live podcast or any of these other programs or platforms, now suddenly the distant ties become suddenly strong ties through the opportunities of access today that we never had before. And that, that's the general meeting. There's just much more expansive opportunity to meet the right people to help you with your, your business or your idea. Uh, thank you, Scott. You also mentioned Clubhouse, and I'm, I'm struck by the way that I see Clubhouse growing. Um, what is it that makes it so special as a social media platform? Yeah, you know, it's the first time ever where you, you really had uh, live podcasting where, you know, as you're, you're cooking dinner, you're playing golf, you're walking the dog, you're, you're half asleep as you go to sleep at night you can still listen in and you, you know, people are kind of tired of looking at screens. Um, that's sort of a nature that, you know, we're, we're seeing some elements of that uh, where we've stopped listening and we're watching everything and we're viewing everything, uh, but we're not listening to everything. Mm -hmm. So for the first time clubhouse came along with live listening, but, but you can reach people, uh, connect people speaking through, direct mail through uh, Twitter, or Instagram, or other ways of reaching those speakers. But for the first time ever, live podcasting became a sort of relaxing way of getting information and intelligence. And I think that's why it's been such a big impact. Mm -hmm. It certainly is growing by uh, leaps and bounds. Um, T, Elena, do we have any other questions that have come in from the audience? Yeah. And um, if I may pop up one, Scott. Um, so I, well, you mentioned the word um, show interest. I was suggesting talents really show their interest because they may be picked up somewhere by some very you know important position they used for this interest. But also on the other side, there are skills like you had um, in the past actually been able to use from far distance across uh, borders. Now, do you think there's actually a trend of technology or, um, you know, personal mindset been changing that people are start, starting to show a lot of those interests and also be able to cross borderly, you know, communicate uh, of different talents using different places. Now you've been actually the VP of Amchan Shanghai. Do you actually see some real practice experience related to that. Yeah, I can share two, two stories. Thank you, T. You know, it's really important to listen. I want to emphasize for young people, especially if they're listening in or business people, you know, listen closely. Uh, you know, when I was uh, talking to Professor Young and then Helen, who's actually here in Shanghai, and this like, second encounter, which led to Stan Lee, I had met her twice and she mentioned Stan Lee's name. I wasn't really listening. And then it was the third time I met her and she brought up Stan Lee and they're actually looking quietly for a CEO. And then I, I quizzed her and I said, you mean the real Stan Lee? And uh, yeah, she said, yes. And then that's when I took it seriously. So if I had not been listening or if that I had a fourth meeting and forgot about it, I, th that would have never happened. That, that had a huge impact on my life. And I, and I hope in retrospect for the late Stan Lee, I hope it had an impact on his legacy. Uh, so that's one example. Um, the uh, second example, and, and T, just repeat the last part of the question for me, and I'm going to come to my second example. Yeah, just wondering if you see any when you was in VP uh, for Andrew okay. Trump. Yeah, you know, sitting in that position. Yeah, thank you. Sitting in that position as vice president. So the president was like a political person, and uh, you know, political aspects, prior State Department and took care of the political part of uh, the interaction with the US government, China government. But my position as vice president, I was the business vice president. So just about any business that came into Shanghai, typically it was on their, their bucket list to go see the American Chamber of Commerce. We're probably one of the largest chambers outside the United States uh, in the middle of uh, Jing'an, uh, Shanghai, the business center. And, and so all these business people, small, medium, and large would come see me. 
And I, so I, I saw so many different ideas and projects and pitches and, and things, and they were really looking for help. And, you know, I tell you, and I was there almost five years, but in my first year, I was listening a lot, but I had the notion, well, you better be a member of Van Shemsheng, or then I can help you. And that was sort of how I was trained. But I tell you what, the last four years that I was there is everybody who walked in the door got something back from me. And that led to opportunities for the chamber, but certainly opportunities for them. And I got, because he had so much repetition of these people coming in that, that it was a learning culture and uh, it was intelligence was coming in the door every day. And so it was a great opportunity to learn and pitch and, and, and pitch opportunities and learn about the aspirations of business people, small, medium, and large. And I think that's what really drew me to, uh, you know, these later investment capital opportunities that came later and, and gave me a real attentive listening ear and, 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 you know, really watching eye for these, these things that are happening. Thank you for that. That's a great question. Thank you so much. And, 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 and thank you for that great answer, because from experience, we do see there is a critical demanding on a platform to supporting those exchange of talents and also business opportunity from small, medium, large. And the trend that we're going on, like Clubhouse and a few other platforms you mentioned, really can can help drive that and make it more efficient board. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Elena, any other questions? Yeah, so we have one more question. Uh, Share Tribe is a company that makes platform technology easy and accessible for individuals and, and organizations to build their platforms, such as website like Airbnb and an app like Uber. So through 60 years of separation, how this company reach out and promote so that they can have a great business and help boost the sharing economy from your professional perspective. Thank you, Scott. Yeah, so for Shared Tribe, you know, I'm not so familiar with it. It, it sounds like uh, a great way to create a plat, you know, a, a software-based platform to, you know, ignite and promote things like, uh, you know, Airbnb type, type concept, shared services concepts that are out there. So that sounds like a, an opportunity, um, and I'm sure they do. Uh, I, I don't know much about them. I'm, I'm sure it's an opportunity for those that want to develop that kind of uh, software platform. But I would, I would just emphasize that. What, what, what you need still behind that is you, you need a, a ready act, uh, audience that uh, through that platform, uh, you still got to promote the platform. You have to have people have access to the platform. And behind that, you know, if you're building a business, particularly if you're going to accelerate a business and, and try, to, try to move to different you know, cities very quickly and build, build something and accelerate, not just in one country, but multiple countries, then I would say the important thing is to really look at the, what's behind it. And, uh, are there are there ready investors behind it? And I'm a big I'm a big believer in location based capital, uh, so that people can uh, businesses can accelerate quickly and find opportunities anywhere in the world. And and as I mentioned before, cash is you know cash is uh, is flush in the market, uh, but the efficiency of cash matching opportunities is something I, I would look, I would have a young person a young business an entrepreneur look deeply at what's behind the platform. That's the most important thing. Thank you. Good um, if we don't have any other questions, I think we need to start wrapping this up. T. Uh, Elena Godfrey. Okay. Um, Scott, I'm, I'm, I'm taken by what you just uh, said here. The efficiency of capital matching investment opportunities as being inefficient. Uh, I think that's a great subject for another conversation, another day, because when you actually think of it, it is very, very true. Um, you know, you have large pools of capital on the one side, you have many, many ideas on the other side. And yet, in spite of all the social platforms and in spite of all the, shall we say, uh, I don't know, uh, private equity shops and angel investors and everything else, there's still a tremendous amount of inefficiency in matching yes. capital to ideas. Um, yeah. I think that's a great conversation for, for another day. We have to start closing this up. Uh, any uh, any uh, final thoughts, 
Scott? Well, I just say thanks. Uh, I really appreciate uh, the Glaze platform. The, the shared services economy is uh, is so exciting and powerful in today's world. And I, it's really exciting for young people as well, because they uh, uh, we want to make things more efficient for them. And, and uh, uh, dreams are more possible today than ever before. So I, for young people, for entrepreneurs that are out there, keep believing. And uh, six degrees of separation, it sounds like uh, like an age old theory, but actually the magic of meeting somebody today or tomorrow at a meeting, uh, someone sitting across the room or across the table is still as powerful as it ever was. And they match that with today's technology and platforms that are out there. Build your idea, build your business, make it happen. And so I wish everybody the best. Thank you, Scott. Thank you for very good advice on listening, on weak ties, on how to take advantage of the platforms we have available today to pursue our ideas and our dreams uh, in the direction of a sharing economy. Uh, friends, uh, two movies you have to see in the next two weeks before we meet again for our next show on the 26th. Um, those two movies are Six Degrees of Separation and Babel, the two movies that Scott has suggested that will give us further <laughs> insights into Six Degrees of Separation, which I find is a fascinating story. Until then, thank you so much for having joined us. We look forward to being again with you on, the, on Wednesday the 26th um, of this month um, at the same time. Uh, so that we can have another interesting conversation. And by the way, the next speaker just might be a person that through six degrees of separation and clubhouse, we are attempting to reach to invite her to be on the show. <laughs> so thank you so Thanks. much. Have a wonderful day or evening and see you on the 26th. Scott, everyone, bye-bye and see thank, you next time. Thank you, bye-bye. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.